right, what's up, everybody? Uh, all praises to the Most High, Yah, our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, the Son. All right, so I got a video from a friend, you know, who sent me a video, and it was talking about the rapture, right? And I've done videos on this, but you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go over this specifically and try to, you know, help people to understand. When you talk about the rapture, you know, the uh, son of perdition, and the Antichrist, I mean, not the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who people call the Antichrist, and, you know what I'm saying, the mark of the beast, which one comes forth first in the, in the order as given to us out of scripture, okay? So, first of all, let me show y'all the video that... Article, have you, have you had your eyes scanned by what's called the orb? And this is why I said Michael don't believe in a pre-trip uh, rapture. Michael Schneider don't believe in a pre-trip rapture. I don't believe this thing is going to be rolled out until after the rapture. Because it makes sense. Number one, they would save a lot of money because millions of people will be gone. So they won't need to distribute to 8 billion people. This is perfect for the Great Tribulation. Perfect because it can also keep track of who's left on the earth. Don't forget, the rapture is going to cause a lot of chaos on this earth. People are gonna be like, what the heck just happened? Babies are gonna be gone, kids are gonna be gone. Millions of people are gonna disappear in the blink of an eye, all of a sudden. According to Zero Hedge, hundreds of thousands of people in Europe have already had their eyeballs scanned and have been issued a world ID. Now, let me stop right there and say this. If this is going on right now, how much closer again are we to the rapture of the church? Because this is definitely part of the eight, uh, Antichrist system. This is definitely part of the Great Tribulation. And this is coming. There's no doubt about it. But I don't believe it can't show up while the church is still here because this is evil. Folks, the rapture of the church is about to happen. Why am I saying it's about to happen? Because the tribulation period is casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, after the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. So the rapture of the church will occur, and I, could, I believe that could occur any day now. The rapture occurs, the Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture, and during the coming tribulation period, which we are not in yet, there will be a system in place that comes about that will be able to track and monitor every single human on the planet. And it's a system that's going to be able to control all buying and selling. And if we see this B system that's gonna be implemented during the coming tribulation period, casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now, if we see the stage getting set up for this coming B system where they wanna be able to track and monitor every single human on the planet and control all buying and selling. And we know the rapture occurs before the tribulation period begins. How close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. It could occur at any moment. Hey everybody, Greg Laurie here answering the question, is the vaccine the mark of the beast? Ready for the answer? No. How do you know, Greg? Well, here's how I know. When people take the actual mark of the beast, which of course is 666, they will know they're taking it because you will have to pledge allegiance to the Antichrist. So there can't be a mark without an Antichrist. An Antichrist cannot be revealed until Jesus Christ returns for his church and catches us up to heaven. But listen, the technology for this mark, it's effectively here, right? We all know that. So if that's close and the coming of Christ for his church, it's even closer. Look up. Your redemption draws near. They are preparing themselves not to fight and to, they are preparing themselves to disappear. And that's why so many of them were overtaken in the last episode. 
but rather we're going to talk about whether Christians should take this vaccination and is this vaccination somehow connected to the mark of the beast. So here are question number one is if you believe in the rapture, more specifically the pre-tribulation rapture, which is the teaching that I subscribe to, which is the idea that Christ is going to return for his church and he is going to rapture or take away all those who have placed their faith in Christ then that means that by the time the mark of the beast is even offered, then we aren't gonna be here to accept it anyway because we are gonna be in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you believe in that, which I do, then taking a vaccination or a chip or anything is not necessarily anything we need to be worried about because we will be raptured and long gone before any sort of mark of the beast is available then taking a vaccination or a chip or anything is not necessarily anything we need to be worried about because we will be raptured and long gone before any sort of mark of the beast is available. And this doctrine and way of thought was everywhere. So, you see from this video, and this is where a lot of people got their theology jacked up, right? And this is why I tell you, if you choose to watch videos rather than reading the Bible, you're going to get messed up, okay? So you see from that video, what did they say? That the son of perdition and the mark of the beast, all of that stuff happens after the rapture, okay? Morning, Sister Tammy, all right? They say that it happens after the rapture. Now, if you have that belief and you're sitting here waiting for Christ to come and then they come in there they tell people what, what what's happening now with the digital currencies that you know what you know this is everybody is like well you know it, it can't be the mark of the beast because Christ has to come first right this is why you got to understand what does the Bible tell you okay so this is where we're going to go over this and we're going to go through scripture right so the point that you now know and understand right the order of events according to the Bible all right, so first let me show you show you that the word rapture is not even in the Bible because that's the first thing that I'm going to have to because you got people that deny anything about the rapture, okay? So let's go. All right, so we're in a strong concordance, okay? And we're going to pick it up and we're looking at the words, right? So we're going to go to R-A-P, right? This is all in alphabetical order. So R-A-P, Rafa, and then you have Rafu, right? And then you have rare. So if rapture, the word rapture was in this Bible, then you would have R-A-P-T-U-R-E between Rafu and rare. So this tells you that the word rapture is not even in the Bible, okay? So when people say about the rapture, what do they mean, okay? Let me go pull this up on my phone and I'll show you so that we'll, we can go and talk about this even more. All right, so let's, uh, let's go pull up rapture. Okay? Okay, so the word rapture. A feeling of intense pleasure or joy. Okay, so that's what the word literally means. But now, according to some millennial teaching, the transport believer, the transport of believers from earth to heaven at the second coming of Christ. People will be raptured out of automobiles as they are driving along. Okay? So they're talking about the, the, the gathering together of the church at the second coming of Christ. So that's what rapture means in Christian theology, okay? Is that when Christ come at his second gather, second coming, right? He's already come the first time at his second coming and when we'll be taken away. Now, let's see, is that biblical, okay? Because you got a lot of people saying, well, I don't believe in no rapture. I don't care what you believe in. Yeah, and I know the word rapture is not in the Bible, so we're not talking, we, you know what I mean? You know, literally, if you're going to say, well, the word rapture is not even in the Bible. Yeah, but the gathering of the church and, the, and, the, and the, the, the gathering of the saints is. Okay, so let's go. So now we understand what the word rapture means and what, why it says what it says. Okay, so now we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians. We're in chapter 4, and this is what it says. For if we believe that Jesus, I'm in verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Okay, so those of us who are alive when the Lord comes shall not prevent them which are asleep. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Okay, so he just told you that the Lord's going to come and there's going to be a trumpet sound, right? With the voice of the archangel. Remember that, because we're going to come back to this in a minute. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, okay? So those who are already dead, they go up first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, right? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, okay? So you see that the Bible does tell you there will be a catching away of the, of the church, okay? So now let's go to Matthew 24, and let's get, we see what Paul said, but let's get it from Christ himself or what he said, okay? So let's go Matthew 24, and we'll address that, and then we're going to put, start putting everything in order, okay? So let's go Matthew 24, and let's see what Christ said about all this, okay? Matthew 24, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Right? And that's what happened in, in, when the Romans came down in AD 70 and destroyed, you know, the temple. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him proudly, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay? So how are we going to know when you come and it's going to be the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So you see the wars and rumors of wars happen before Christ's coming. That's what he told you, right? See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom shall rise against kingdom, right? So we see that this happens before his coming. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, right? All these are the beginnings of sorrows, right? So all this happens before his coming, right? Nine, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So this happens before his coming, right? And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. So you see, you got it again. But he still has not talked about him coming back yet. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So now he's telling you that the gospel got to be preached into all nations. Make sure we take note of that because we're going to go over that and you're going to see that in Revelation. Okay? The gospel got to be preached before Christ come. Right? When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that are in sucking those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened, right? So he said to the people that's still here, the elect, this thing is going to get so bad that, that he has to come back and intervene. Because you see, he still has not talked about him coming to get anybody. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So now you don't worry about signs and wonders, right? Because you got false Christs and false prophets, you don't worry about signs and wonders because he ain't came yet, right? Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not, right? So anybody saying that they are some type of Christ on this earth, you already know not to believe them. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he told you, when I come back, everybody's going to see it, right? For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So now he's talking about the gathering together, right? 
So he just told you, you know, don't believe that these people, you know what I mean, that's coming and saying that they're Christ, don't believe them even if they're doing signs and miracles, right? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. What days was he talking about? About the beginning of sorrows and about, you see what I'm saying, the days of these false Christs and false prophets, right? But he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Right? Let's flip it over. And the power of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all of the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So, right? So, you don't get caught up in, you know, these false price, false Christs and false prophets. You are waiting to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Right? Now, remember, he comes in the clouds of heaven. Period. You don't get caught up in, in somebody doing miracles. Right? 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Right? Ain't that what Paul said? Is that where Paul was getting this from? From Christ? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. We go up to meet him in the clouds, right? That's exactly what we read, right? Now learn a parable of the fig tree when its branches yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is not, okay? So now we see the order that Christ... The nation's got to rise against nation. You got all this trauma and turmoil going on, right? And then, you know what I mean? You got these false Christs and false prophets that start to appear and start doing miracles. And all of these people are drawn into that because they're going out here trying to find Jesus in the wilderness or wherever they're saying that he is. And he said, uh-uh. You know, the sun would turn dark and the moon will not give her light. And then you'll see, you see what I'm saying? The sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds and everybody will see it. And then people will mourn when they see him coming, right? All right. So now let's go to 2 Thessalonians and let's talk about the son of perdition in all of this. How does he, how does he come into all of this? All right. So let's, which many people like to say the Antichrist, but anybody who denies Christ is a spirit of Antichrist. Okay, but when we specifically talk about this leader who's going to who's going to come up out of the, this one nations, so that's why you see what they saying in this about this leader coming and establishing peace. You know how how he comes after Christ. That's that's a lie, right? No, that's not according to Scripture, and I'm going to show y'all. All right, so let's go and see what what the Scripture tells us about. Okay, we're in Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there it is again. He's coming. He's coming to get the saints and by our gathering together unto him. So this is when people talk about the rapture. They're talking about our gathering together where we get caught up to meet him in the clouds. So when people say they don't believe in the rapture, well, keep on saying that nonsense and you're going to be stuck here. Why? Because your mouth said you don't believe. Right. And if you don't believe, you don't go. You spoke it on yourself. Right? So stop being ignorant. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Right? So he said, don't be deceived by people. For that day shall not come. Okay? For the, our gathering together unto him does not come except there come a falling away first, which you are beginning to see that now. People are leaving the faith. What else has to happen first? That man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, right? So it tells us that before Christ comes back, what happens first? There come a falling away first and the son of perdition has to be revealed who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. So, let's flip the page. All right. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So now this guy comes on the scene and he's a great blasphemer, but he comes before Christ, right? Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. 
And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Right? So when Christ comes, he comes to destroy the son of the perdition. So the son of perdition has to be here first. Right? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. Did not Christ tell us that there will be false Christ and false, false, uh, false teachers and prophets, right? Jesus, when he comes back, Yahusha, when he comes back, he's coming back to destroy the son of perdition and all these fake Christ running around down here, right? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth and that they might be saved. So this whole garbage about after the rapture, you're going to get saved? No, you're either going to get in or after that, you're getting destroyed, right? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's why he's going to allow these false Christs to do all these miracles, right? For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, right? So you ain't coming out of that. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or, by, or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope, through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. All right? Now, let's go to Revelations and let's see if what we're saying lines up. Okay? So we're going to go to Revelation 13 because in the video you seen that they said that all of this stuff happens before Christ comes. Right? I mean, that, that Christ comes first and then these things happen. Well, in Revelation, if you just read it in order, you'll see what happens first. First, it comes this great falling away of the church. The son of perdition has to, has to be revealed, right? Then you get the mark of the beast. Then Christ comes, because when Christ comes, he comes for two reasons. One, he's coming to gather his elect because he's getting ready to destroy everybody else on the earth, okay? Including the son of perdition. Now let's see if that's what we get out of Revelations. Okay, so now we're going to go to Revelations chapter 13. All right, so let's go. We're going to read 13 and 14, and then y'all see this clearly, right? Of when all these things are to take place and in what sequence they take place in. This is why I tell you, you got to read your Bible and you got to study your Bible, and you can't just be going based off of what people are saying in movies and all this type of stuff. The fake Jews run that, right? They run that. And they have tainted Christianity with a bunch of lies. Okay? All right, so here, let's go. Revelation chapter 12. I mean, chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Okay? Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay? This beast is the final world kingdom that has to come on the earth. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Well, in Revelation 12, we know that the dragon is Satan. So this final world kingdom is going to be a devil-worshiping kingdom. Why? Because they, they get their power from Satan, right? Matter of fact, let me just show y'all Revelation 12, 9, so y'all know exactly what I what it means when I tell y'all that this beast is this final kingdom is Luciferian. That's what you're seeing that's going on right now, right? So Revelation 12 and 9, right? What does it say? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, right? And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angel were cast out with him. So the dragon is the devil, Satan, okay? All right, now let's go back to chapter 13. All right, so now that we have that established, so this final kingdom gets its authority from the dragon, right? Uh, where's it at? Right, this final kingdom gets its authority from the dragon or from Satan. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. So when they worship, when 
When they're worshiping the dragon, who are they worshiping? Satan, right? And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this is the final kingdom that has to come on the earth. People are not going to go against the government, right? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, right? So when you get the three and a half years that they always talk about, there's three and a half years of what's having to deal with this beast, with this system, right? Okay, 40 and two months, okay? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So this is the son of perdition that's doing all of this, right? This is the son of perdition that's doing all this. And he was given unto him to make war with the saints. So he's going against everybody who's Christ. That's why we got to be here because he's, he's, he's here persecuting us. And Christ told us that they was going to persecute us, right? And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So if you ain't with Christ, you're going to worship this beast. You're going to worship Satan because you're going to be part of it, right? If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So you see, the saints ain't gone nowhere yet, right? And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon right? This is the son of perdition, right? And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, so the first beast is the kingdom. It's the world kingdom. The leader that comes out of this world kingdom is the son of perdition, right? Verse 13, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Ain't that what we read in Thessalonians? Ain't that what Christ said about these false people doing miracles, right? And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Right? So you see, the Christians ain't gone nowhere yet. The people of faith ain't gone nowhere yet. Right? And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you see, now you got the mark of the beast, right? The mark of the beast is the mark of the kingdom of the world government system, right? You're in order for you to participate in the economy, you got to pledge your allegiance to Satan, right? 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath an understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. So that's where you get your 666 from, right? Now, you ain't seen nothing about Christ coming back yet, right? But in chapter 14, we just see, now we're in here being persecuted. They tell us that we can't buy ourselves, say we take the mark. Now here we go, right? And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sinai, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's names written in their forehead. Who is the lamb? That's Christ, right? And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Right? So who are the 144,000? They were the first ones redeemed. These are they which were not defiled with women. So the 144,000 are not women. They can't be women. They're all men, for they are virgins. So any man that's laid with a woman, he ain't part of the 144,000, right? These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Right? Now let's stop right there. Remember what we talked about when Christ said that the gospel had to be preached into all the earth and then shall the end come. Right? 
So you see, what you just from that we know the saints ain't going nowhere, right? Because Christ even told us that first has the gospel has to be preached into all the earth, and then shall the end come, right? So we already then seen from this that the son of perdition has already happened in 13, right? The one world government has already happened in chapter 13, right? So in chapter 14, now we're talking about Christ being there and he's about ready to come back. So let's go and see if that's consistent. All right, let's go back to scripture. All right, verse six. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is, okay, let's flip the page. For the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So you worship the creator, right? Not this government, not these people in, 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 in high places. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So Babylon has to fall before Christ come back. We ain't seen Christ come, come back yet in Revelation, right? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Right? So it didn't say that you can get saved after this. He said, if you take this mark, and you receive this mark, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstones in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Right? It don't say nothing about you getting saved after this. Right? It told you you better not do it. If you take it, you're screwed. 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So this is Christians. You ain't going nowhere yet. Right? This is what it says. Here are the gay that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You're a Christian, right? And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So Christ ain't came yet. So this is where people are saying, oh, anybody after that, they get to go. Christ ain't came yet, right? When they start killing us and killing Christians, we still, the end still ain't happened yet. Now in verse 14, and I looked and behold a white cloud. Well, what did Jesus say? He comes back in a cloud. And I looked and behold a, a white cloud and upon the cloud, one sat like unto the son of man. There's Jesus. Now he's coming back, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple. Remember, Jesus said he come with the voice of the archangel, sounded like a sound of a trump. Well, another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. This is our gathering together to him, right? So now you see where he's just come back. Another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So half have already went with Christ. Well, the people that went with Christ and went with Christ. Everybody else, the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. So everybody else, you're going through the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden without the city and blood came out of the wine press even into the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So when we talk about the wrath of God, what's the wrath of God, right? What did he tell you? The same shall drink, if you take the mark, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Right? So now we see. We see why these people are still trying to lie to people and get people confused. Because that way, if you don't think that the mark of the beast is coming first, you'll take it. And if you take it, you have just now condemned yourself to torment. So you ain't taking no more. Now, let's start talking about some of these digital currencies. 
So y'all can see, all this time everybody's, oh, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. You have never had the technology on the earth, even after World War I and World War II. People was like, yeah, nation rise against nation. Oh, the son of perdition, Jesus is coming. No, because at that time, you didn't have a one world government. And at that time, you didn't have a system in place in which you would not buy, be able to buy or sell, say, if you take that mark, right? But now what do we have going on here, right? We got a lot of things that are now starting to go on. Let me show you a cartoon, you know? They're even putting this stuff in cartoons and they're trying to get you conditioned Charter for this. city is stunned by the sudden... ...out of Rook Unlimited's most fantastic device ever. The Smart Mark. Throw your other devices away because the Smart Mark is more than just a phone. It's part of you. Use it as cash. See that? Book your travel. And even shoot video. Distribution points are all over the city. And don't let the lines discourage you. The Rook Unlimited Smart Mark is worth the wait. I never realized how wonderful technology could make me feel. The Smart Mark has brought order to my life. And the best part? It's absolutely free. A gift of thanks to our city from Rook Unlimited. Right? Okay. So that cartoon was in... Was in... Let me show y'all this. What's going on in Nigeria? Okay. So that cartoon was from Stretch on Netflix. So as you see, as the banks are shredding their banknotes in mass, as their nation is one of the first to go all out on the CBDC agenda, right? Nigeria is suffering from the lack of cash in circulation. You see, they're destroying their cash. Why? Because they get ready to bring these digital currencies on, right? Okay, what you got going on with BRICS right now? Let's talk about that real quick. Brazil, Russia, India, China, whatever. But I think all of these nations that are joining all this should further explain what spirit controls, uh, what's being cast into the atmosphere. That's what's being called. Oh, I can't see that. That is being called broadcasting. Absolutely. A Amen. Absolutely. Right? Because that's what they're doing. That's what the, the TVs and all that stuff is how they have, they programmed all of us. Right? You know, through that, the music industry, all of this stuff, right? And they tell you, they, they program and they get you to believe in this stuff. So even when I showed y'all this first video, a lot of people believe what the rapture, that, that it comes first before the mark of the beast. Why? Because they were told this and what, uh, you know, through, through media, you know? But when you read the Bible, you see that that's not true. You see that they got it out of order. So you see what's happening. You see why they're doing it, right? Absolutely. You got to protect your guests. You got to get in the word. You got to know the Bible. Because if you got the Bible, you got the word in you. Then anything coming from external, if it don't line up with the word that's in you, you can already you can already discern it and you can reject it. But when you are empty and you don't have any information in you, then this information that comes to you can, can get into your heart and become a, a, a belief. And then it becomes deep rooted in you, right? So this is what you got to understand as far as you got to get into the word and understand the word for yourself right? And have the word in you. Okay. Now, what I was saying about the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and all of them, you seeing all these nations starting to go towards that. I think my personal belief, now don't, you, this is my personal belief. This ain't coming from the word of God. This is coming from my personal belief. I believe they're about ready to burn France, the United States and, and break Britain. Right. But I think that, that these three nations got to go into, uh, uh, into captivity for what they've done to the Israelites. Okay. But anyway, if they burn them because they got to get rid of cash, they got to go to a one uh, to a digital world order, a one currency system, right? And when they get into a digital currency, the reason why so many people are going to have to go with it, because people are going to be scared. They ain't got no faith, right? You ain't got no faith. You don't understand. You know what? Uh, well, if I can't go and buy or sell, how am I going to make it? What am I going to do, right? This is where you got to have faith in the Lord that when God is telling you in dreams and visions, if he tells you to get up and go somewhere, you get up and go, right? If God puts man on the ground for you to eat, he'll put man on the ground for you to eat. You know what I mean? 
If you got to go live out in a tent somewhere, you're going to have to go live out in a tent. But one way or the other, the Most High will tell you what you need to do. And he will protect you, right? However, if you don't understand this and you are a true believer, you're going to be shook to the core by this. And you see, they got the technology right now. So as the rest of the nations, if they do, if we get ready to get this great big world war and they start fighting and then they start destroying credit and start destroying cash and then they come to an agreement and say, listen, guys, you know, we got to stop fighting. We're fighting over religions and all this stuff and we got to stop fighting, right? Then they come in and have an, another world agreement after all of this fighting and people are just like, yes, please, let's stop the wars. Let's stop all of this. Then you get this leader that arises and now he comes on the scene and then says, we all need to get under one system. We all need to take the mark, you know what I mean? So that we can all get along and anybody that don't want to do it because they think they're Christians, we can get rid of them, you know what I'm saying? And we'll destroy them for not taking the mark, right? They keep talking about a hologram of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, they, they, with Project Blue Beam and all that kind of stuff that they can do, yeah, right? So we got, we, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. You know, remember, God said he's going to pull out great delusion for people to believe a lie, right? But when Jesus comes back, everybody sees it. So that's why we ain't worried about Christ coming back in secret. Everybody will see it. But what we got to be concerned with is the mark of the beast. You understand the digital currencies and you see these nations are siding up preparing for war, right? Now, I'm just going to be honest with some of you. Some of you, the most high is going to have to take you out of here before the mark of the beast comes because you're not going to have the faith strong enough to make it. That's why, you know, in Isaiah where it talks about the righteous perish if nobody led their heart, that God is taking them out of here for, to, to keep them from the evil to come. I'm paraphrasing. I'm trying to tell everybody now, you have got to understand because of this system that is evidently placed in our face and they're already starting to try to condition people to receive it like it's no big, no big deal. The son of perdition, you know, all we are is war from jumping off between Russia, the United States, you know what I'm saying, uh, China. Great Britain and France and all of them and then what's going on in Africa all we are is one world war away and it looks like that is on the horizon and then all hell is going to break loose because all of your supply chains with your food, your trucking, all that stuff can be disrupted this this, this level of living see, they used to, they couldn't do it because people farmed, people people had their own source of, of water, you know, through wells and all this stuff, people now are not living like that and the people who are living like that in the mountains and stuff like that, now they can make fire come down from you on the side of heaven, which is why I want to get into these directed energy weapons, right? I live in West Virginia. All these years I'm thinking, well, I'm in the mountains. I just go to the mountains. Not no more. After I saw what they done in Hawaii, right? These people are spraying all this stuff that they're spraying. That's an accelerant. That makes the fires hotter. That makes it burn. That's why they're spraying the aluminum and barium in the air. Then they got these directed energy weapons to start the fire, just like you're taking a magnifying glass and putting it on a piece of paper. You know what happens, right? They got these directed energy weapons, and that's what they think is what happened, you know what I'm saying, allegedly, what happened in Hawaii. Because these people burned them out of there, and now they're trying to buy up that land. They wanted them people out of there. So they will burn you. They got the means to literally, and, that, and people saying there ain't no such thing as directed energy weapons. Look it up. The military already telling you they can do it. They already got it on their websites that they can do it. Right? So the bottom line is, they can burn you out of anywhere. So this is why you got to understand, you know, when he talks about he making fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men, they can do that now. They can do it. All that's fulfilled. That prophecy is now fulfilled. Right? So this is why you got to understand where we are. But Christ don't come to after the mark of the beast and all that stuff is implemented. And you better not take that mark. Don't let people fool you. 
And a lot of y'all got scared over that. And you went and done something or whatever. Well, Psalm 91 went right out the window. Went right out the window. People got afraid. They thought they was going to lose their job. They thought they was whatever. You, if you can't pass that, what you going to do when the real mark come down here? You got to understand. You got to be willing to lose your life to save your life. Right? You can't try to save your life and think you're going to keep your life. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. That ain't what Christ said. All right? Well, this went a lot longer than what I planned on, so let me get off here. <laughs> anyway, you know, thanks for watching. Please share this video. This is one of the most important ones. All right, but anyway, y'all please, y'all please share this video. This is important. People need to understand this, right? I'm one man. I can't get it out to everybody, right? And they be trying to block me anyway. All right, but y'all have a blessed day. God bless y'all.